So welcome back to the Daily Drift, everybody. We're just gonna attempt it and see how it goes. And uh, if it breaks, it breaks. It's whatever. Oh, we got fire. Well, I'm not sure exactly what I did, but I think I screwed something up because I can't turn the diff. I can't get this thing to move at all, and it's just a pinion at this point, so. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. No worship. Yeah. Thanks for watching the Daily Drift. So before we can get started welding this diff, I gotta get it separated from the subframe. Now, obviously I wanna do the bushings and all that stuff, but we're just gonna get done what we can today, which is main priority, weld the diff. That's number one priority. So first things first, we gotta remove the axles. So on the underside, you're gonna have these bolts here, and they're an E12 inverted Torx. They're pretty simple to unbolt when it's under the car, because then you can just put it in park or drive. But in my situation, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because this is just gonna to wanna to spin. Also, the main reason we're doing this is because it's an open diff. And if you're wondering what that means, if you notice I can spin this one, and that one over there doesn't turn. So even when I turn this side here, that side doesn't want to spin. You can see it's very slowly turning compared to how fast this one is. So yeah, that's the main reason why we're welding this thing, because with an open diff, it's just gonna, one side's gonna open, and it's just gonna spin at a lower rate than the outside. And that's basically just so when you're turning, that way it's easier for like when you're driving on the road and stuff like that to maintain traction. Well, in drifting, we wanna lose traction, at least in the rear. So, you know, with this thing not being able to lock up and we're going to transition, that's why it's a little bit rough. And a lot of times it's hard to transition from one point to the other because it just opens up doesn't spin, you lose drift, and it's just, it's a bad time. Um, so that's another reason why we're welding this sucker. So first things first, we'll get the axles off, and then we'll work on getting the other three bolts off. The three bolts are real easy. If you're under the car, you need to be careful, make sure there's a jack and all that, but for me, it's out, so it's pretty simple. So that was a lot harder than I thought it would be. <clears throat> Fuck, I can't talk today. <clears throat> I'm back. <laughs> so it was a lot more difficult than I thought it would be because when you have this thing out of the car, it like twists and rotates and there's a lot of movement in it. So it's really hard to get those bolts off. And if you saw, I had to do like some special ninja tricks standing on top of it. But we got all the axles out. We've got this thing out, just sitting down here. Now, looking at this realistically, you could just undo the two mount bolts if you supported it with a jack and then undo this thing and you could get in there and weld up under the car. But considering it's right next to the gas tank and it's kind of awkward being laying down, I like this method way better because I can actually get in there and see what I'm doing. This is the location of the front bolt. It's just on the other side. Um, but you can see, just unhook those. They mount there and there. The only other problem I had was getting the sway bar out. There's a nut on both sides and then this just has to lift up and out. So you just loosen up both of those and then you're good to go. So now our subframe's just chilling. So, you know, later we'll probably work on getting this apart so we can get to these bushings because we're gonna be changing all those out. Um, as well as the bushings on this, but I don't wanna change them until after we weld it. Dang, those airplanes are really getting it. So anyway, what I wanna do is I'm gonna weld this thing before I worry about putting the bushings in and all that, because like I said, my main goal is just to get this thing welded up today. If we can do that, then we're doing pretty good. Well, I ran into my first issue. I don't have a tool to drain the fluid from the diff because it's a massive torque spit. Go figure. Look at the size of that drain hole. I'm not even sure what size that is, but I know for a fact I don't have one that big. So I'm gonna have to go to the parts store. Ah, the joys of owning a car. Why are we still here? Okay, so I was having a really hard time locating a socket. I couldn't find one that fit right. Supposedly it's like a 14 mil Allen, um, but I came up with an idea that I think might work. Check this out. So my idea is pretty simple. You see that this bolt, what I'm gonna do is I just basically found a bolt that's basically the size of a 14 mil. And I'm going to, I put a nut on there as like a jam nut. Now ideally I would have a second one, but I couldn't find one that fit. But 
this fits in the hole perfectly. That's what she said. And then I get a wrench on this, and I might be able to loosen it with that. The only problem is, is that I don't have the jam nut. I, ideally, if I had a jam nut, this would be perfect, and this, really, this should work. I don't see why it won't, because that's literally the exact same thing. So, we'll give it a shot. Guys, it's a miracle. I found the jam nut, so I'm just gonna jam this on there, put it in the diff, and we'll see if it works. I, I don't see why it won't, but we're just gonna give it a shot. That's basically the main idea right there. It's very simple, but when you don't have a tool, we just make them, I guess. Pop that sucker in there. Ugh, it's slipping. Oh, you know what it is? It's my tool, it's too fat. Well, it was worth a shot, but I think I'm gonna have to actually just go get the right tool because this is just not working. I don't know why, every time I go to the store, it always seems like it takes forever and takes so much time away from the build. But I managed to get the thing. They sell it in like a uh, three-piece thing. I'm sure most auto parts stores you can find them. 12, 14, 17, but I think it's the 14. So we're just gonna pop that sucker in there and get that thing drained. All right, let's try this 14. Yep, definitely 14. Mm. Well, I think it's on there. Oh! Whoo, gotta be careful there. That thing was tight as a button. Something my grandmother would have said. So I don't know about y'all, but I absolutely hate the smell of diff fluid. It smells like, pretty much like rotten eggs. I'm gonna drain all this out, which is probably gonna be nasty. Ugh, it smells so bad. Well, that should get rid of most of the stuff, but before we actually weld this thing, we're, after gonna, we're gonna have to pop this off and clean it out like thoroughly, because if we don't, it'll catch on fire. And I'm not trying to burn my house down. So now we're just gonna pull all these bolts off to hold the housing on. There should be two here and then two here and then two down here. And that should be it. And then we should be able to just pop that off. Yep, that's a 16. And uh, yeah, let's just do it. Don't do this at home. I know, I know, you shouldn't use an impact on a non-impact socket because it will potentially break. But, uh, you know, I don't have one. So, sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. And here we are. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? Baggies make my life so much easier when it comes to trying to find bolts and figuring out where they go. I do this all the time. If I have my pen, I'll mark on it, but I'm just gonna keep it with the diff. So now it might be a little bit stuck. Oh, nope, came right off. Wow, that's nice. How convenient. Looks like there was no seal at all. Like no RTV whatsoever. So that's, um, that's interesting because usually these things get stuck. Hmm, all right, well, let's take a look at what we got. So if you look in there, you can see the spider gears. Um, it's pretty simple how this works, but when this turns, those things turn inside there, you see? Um, and basically what that does is that works differently than how a, an LSD would work. This is completely open. Nice for when we want to weld it because we can see all the points because we want to weld in between these joints here. That's the part that's going to prevent this thing from moving. It's going to completely lock it so this whole unit will then move as one. Imagine the diff spinning, and then this is gonna move, this piece will move along the pinion, as you can see there, like a normal diff would, and it rotates the whole axle. So the whole point is we just wanna weld in between these joints in here. You don't wanna weld on this. That would be a very bad day, don't do that. But yeah. So the first thing I need to do is I need to clean this thing out because it's completely filthy. So I'm gonna use some of this here brake clean, uh, and we're just gonna get it all out of there, all the oil and grease and everything, because the last thing I need is a fire right now. And I'm gonna try to weld this. I'm using a gasless welder. It's a piece of crap, and I am a terrible welder. So, when it comes to the actual welding portion, uh, you're on your own, because I, I, if I try to give you advice, it would be terrible, because I don't even know what I'm doing. But, I'm gonna attempt it, because that's what we do. We just go for it. We don't hesitate, we don't worry about it. We tr the only way we're gonna get better at doing this stuff is by doing it. So, we're just gonna attempt it and see how it goes. And uh, if it breaks, it breaks. It's whatever. This costs us nothing, and if I need to, down the road, I can get another diff. 
you know, I mean, they're not that expensive. This is just kind of like a cheap and easy way to do it. Hopefully we won't have that problem. Hopefully it'll be okay. So I'm gonna get to cleaning. So I got my area nice and clean. I got all, everything out of the way that anything that's like really flammable, I'm gonna move those. I'm just cleaning these little metal things I made. Uh, those are the metal plates that are gonna go in these gears. So first I'm gonna go in there and I'm just gonna make sure it's completely welded tight. Once those are welded good, then we'll turn it, do the other side. And then uh, once we get that done, then we'll put the plates in, weld the plates around there and it's not gonna be pretty, but it's gonna work. So let's do this thing. All right, so this is it. We're just gonna go for broke and hopefully I don't break anything. So let's do it. Oh, we got a fire. That's what I was talking about. You gotta be careful. I Evidently, mean, there's still some oil in there, so that's not good. But, looks like we got a good first little pack in there. All right, let's give this another try. Hopefully by now all that stuff will be gone and we won't have any more fire problems. Hey. Is it good to look that way or no? I can stop for a second. All right. Well, I'm blind anyway, so That's true. Yeah, well, you don't want to be more blind, trust me. I'm seeing stars, I got up too quick. <laughs> Are you doing the way you did on the Miata? Yeah, but with plates, because I can actually put plates in there. That's so easy compared to the Miata. I'll be in there a little bit. Gucci gang. That one actually looked okay. Make sure I can still turn this thing. Hmm. Uh oh. Hmm. So here's some of the joys of welding with a really crappy welder. Yeah. This is always a lot of fun. The cord literally snapped, so that's always a fun thing to fix, but it's okay. So far, it seems to be doing its job. It looks like it's doing it, but we got a lot more welds to throw down. I'm gonna go do this, and uh, hopefully soon we'll have this thing finished up. All right, we're back in action, so see what we can do. Now I think I got this thing fixed. We're just gonna go for broke. That ain't moving, but that is, that's good. Now I'm just gonna weld the plates in there and we should be good to go. Huh, well, it's not the best. Looks like it's having trouble actually penetrating because my welder is really, really crappy. But, what are you gonna do? Well, I'm not sure exactly what I did, but I think I screwed something up because I can't turn the diff. So I may have welded it or had weld drop down onto the pinion. So, uh, you know, this is just how it goes sometimes, at least for us. So I might have to find a new diff. Hmm. I'm not sure if you guys remember from the last time or maybe this is still the same video, who knows. The uh, welded diff was basically welded shut and I can't get it to rotate. And I think it's just from slag basically falling in between it when we were welding it. So I'm gonna pull the axles and see if I can pull the carrier out and then look behind there and see if it's okay. Otherwise I'm gonna have to get a new uh, diff. So yeah, let's get to it. All right, so I'm gonna try popping out one of these axles. There it goes. Look at all that slag. So basically I'm just gonna get these things off and then hopefully when I pull this, I'll be able to actually get in there and move the carrier just enough to get behind there and get rid of the slag that's stuck in there. Hopefully, we'll, we'll see. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pry up on this to hopefully pop this thing out. There it goes. Okay, so there's a little metal shim on here. We don't wanna lose that, so I'm just gonna keep this in place. That way I don't lose any of that crap. Ah, there we go. No, I should be able to pop this sucker out. There we go. 
Ugh. Let's take a look and see what happened. So as you can see in here, there's a bunch of little what look like slag balls, basically, is what I'd like to call them. Looks like that might have been the culprit. All these little chunks of slag, slag getting up on the top of this thing. So I'm gonna get in between there and I'm just gonna clean up all the little slag balls that I can find. You can see they're just floating in there. So we're gonna try to get those out and then I'm gonna finish doing the other side of that. Well guys, I've been messing with this thing and the pinion is frozen. I can't move it at all. I think some slag or something got in there and got behind it and it just bound up right in the bearing. I can't get this thing to move at all and it's just a pinion at this point, so. That's what I get for welding with it the wrong direction. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. So let that be a lesson to you guys. If you're gonna weld your diff, make sure that you don't do it setting up on the pinion like that, because all the slag just drops straight down. And I think that's what probably cost me this diff. So I'm gonna have to go and try to find a new diff or a new pinion or something because why are we still here? I'm gonna have to figure something out. Wish me luck guys. I'll see y'all later. Yeah, it's cooked. So stay tuned, Drifters, because in the next episode, we're going to be working on pulling this pinion as well as rebuilding the diff. So be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I just realized that in order to pull the pinion, you're supposed to use a bearing press.